Have you seen this equation? In this video, we're going to derive it. And in so doing, we're going to solve a mystery, which is what is this strange number? 863. Okay, so our equation and our mystery have to do with how the body gets rid of carbon dioxide. And so to look at that, we're going to start with one alveolus, which I'm going to draw like that, even though that's been our drawing for a lung until now. Now it's going to represent just an alveolus. And let's say that you just took in a breath of fresh air, which therefore has no carbon dioxide. Now, if you watched my first video, you probably know that that's not 100% true, that there's some residual air in the alveolus from the last breath. And that's true, but it actually doesn't matter for this calculation. So we can talk about that again at the end. Now the way that the body gets rid of carbon dioxide is to bring it to the lung in blood vessels. And so here we're going to draw a capillary right next to the alveolus. And that capillary will be carrying carbon dioxide, which we're going to draw in blue because we know from the color of our veins that deoxygenated blood is blue. Now the first step in getting rid of the carbon dioxide is to just let these two things sit for a moment because the carbon dioxide is going to want to spread out as much as possible and there's this open space in the alveolus and so it's going to go there. And this is a process that we call gas exchange. And at the same time we're not just exchanging carbon dioxide we also have oxygen moving from the alveolus into the blood but that's not something we're going to look at just now. So here we have our alveolus after it has received a little bit of carbon dioxide, which we're going to draw in blue. And obviously there are other gases in there still, like nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. And here we have our capillary, which still has its blood. And now it has a little bit less carbon dioxide, but still some, because the carbon dioxide has just spread out between the gas and the blood. Now once the carbon dioxide has spread out, we can say that there's a certain partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolus, which is PaCO2. And that number refers to the partial pressure after equilibrium has been reached. So now that we've moved carbon dioxide to the alveolus, we're ready to get rid of it. And to do that, we just breathe it out. We exhale. And the way that that works is that all the little alveoli become smaller, which they like to do because they're very springy. So they're now small and they've gotten rid of their gas, which we've breathed out into the atmosphere. To be complete, we can still draw our capillary here. Let's say that it's still the same blood, so it has not as much carbon dioxide as when it started. But now we're ready for a new batch of blood and a new breath of fresh air to bring us back to where we started. And so that's inhale and new blood. So this is a simplified model because obviously blood is flowing sort of all the time and your breathing in and out takes some amount of time as well, but this model works. So now we might ask, how much carbon dioxide did we breathe out with that breath? And one way to quantify it is to say, if we took all the carbon dioxide that we breathed out and got rid of all the nitrogen and oxygen and everything, how much space would it fill? So what would its volume be? And so we'll call that V. CO2. Now the answer is that it'll be some fraction of the total amount of volume that we exhaled, which we'll call VA for the amount, the volume of gas that leaves the alveolus. And what's the fraction? Well, it's just the fraction of the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide over the total pressure of the gas, which as always is 760 millimeters of mercury. This is only for one single breath. And if we want to talk more about rates, we can multiply both sides by the respiratory rate, which is the number of times that you breathe per minute. And then we can combine the volumes with the respiratory rate to give us breathing rates. And this one is the alveolar ventilation rate, as you remember from the first video. And this one we're going to call V dot CO2, which is the amount of CO2 that you're breathing out per minute. So now let's rewrite the equation solving for the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and using those new terms that we've defined. The alveolar dentilation, 
and V dot CO2. So as an example, let's say two liters of air are coming in and out of your alveolus every minute. And let's say that you're breathing out one liter of carbon dioxide every minute. What this equation says is that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in your alveoli after they've equilibrated with the blood should be half of 760, which makes sense because half of what you're breathing out is carbon dioxide. And there we have our equation. It was that easy. But wait a second, where is our 863? This is not the number we were looking for. The answer to that question lies in the way that these two guys are measured. Because it turns out that there's a very annoying convention that this one should be measured at 273 degrees Kelvin, because that's STP. Whereas this one should be measured at 310 degrees Kelvin, because that's body temperature. And that means that this equation is wrong as it's written. Because you can't look at these volumes at different temperatures. You're giving unfair weight to one of them here. But at least it's an easy fix, because we can calculate what would be V dot CO2 at 310 degrees Kelvin. Because we know what it is at 273 degrees Kelvin. Our ideal gas laws tell us that we just have to multiply by the ratio of the temperatures. And we'll see that the same gas at 310 degrees Kelvin will take more space than it would have at 273 degrees Kelvin. So let's replace this V dot CO2 with this new upgraded V dot CO2. And let's see what that gives us for the equation. So we're going to keep everything except that one term that we want to change. And we're going to find So what happens if we combine these terms together? Well, we get 863. So let me do that magically. And this is our final nice equation. And note that I've gotten rid of the millimeters of mercury, but you know it's there. So let's just look at this equation very briefly and think about it. What we see is that the more carbon dioxide that you're breathing out, the greater the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in your alveolus. And that's no surprise, because that's how you're getting rid of the carbon dioxide. You're expelling it from your alveolus. What's more likely to change is your alveolar ventilation. For example, if you're breathing more or less, or more deeply or more shallowly. And we see that when you breathe less or less deeply, you're going to end up with a buildup of carbon dioxide in your alveoli. And so finally, I want to address the question of, well, is there really no CO2 left in this alveolus after you breathe in? Because if you look here after you exhale, there is still some volume here. And so there's going to be, you know, maybe a little bit of carbon dioxide left there and also up in your airways. And so when you breathe back in, you actually are going to have a little bit of carbon dioxide in your alveoli. So this is inhaling. But it actually doesn't affect our calculations too much because we can just say, well, yes, after you breathed in, there is a little part of the air which already has carbon dioxide in it and we can draw it over there. But most of the air doesn't. And that's the air that can come into equilibrium with the capillary that's coming by with all its carbon dioxide. But this volume here that didn't already have carbon dioxide is what we denote by VA. And that's what's involved in VA dot. And that VA is what we used in our calculation. So basically, we can just think that there's some part of the alveolus that's kind of like wasted. It already has carbon dioxide in the beginning and it still has carbon dioxide at the end. And so to be correct, we can draw that area in there in those earlier pictures. I hope I didn't botch that explanation too much. Basically, there is some carbon dioxide in your alveolus before you exchange gas, but there is some volume that doesn't have any carbon dioxide. That's the fresh air. And that's exactly what VA refers to and VA dot refers to, as you remember from the first video.